Hey YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well today we're going to look at putting a seal in a T20 Ferguson water pump. And that's the water pump there. Now on the tractor there'll be a, a water manifold and it'll be sitting on your tractor something like that. Um, this is where your bottom radiator hose goes in. This is your bypass where it bypasses a bit of water until your thermostat opens. And this part in the front here, that's actually where your water pump bolts in. So what you may know with your water pump is that you have water coming out the bottom. So I'll put that back there. There's a couple of things to look at. On the back of this housing, there's a paper gasket, a little triangle paper gasket. It may be crook and it will run down the front of your engine. If you're going to pull your water pump off, you got the front out anyway, you may as well just pop this housing off. And if you make a gasket for here, make sure you make a gasket for here too, just so it's the same thickness. So, so just keep that in mind. That, that can be why the leak is at the front. Sometimes with a water pump, if you undo the wrong bolt, this bolt here, that goes right through and holds this on. And then there's two bolts down the bottom here. So all you have to do is undo those two and that will give you a um, that housing and it gives you a chance to clean it out and get the rust out and that so so just be aware of that now, This water pump This is an early TEA 20 water pump. It's off a 1948 TE 20 and It's a tractor that we're restoring over time. We're, we're using it to do the YouTube clips um, Bit by bit so as we do a part we'll film it and over the time we'll we'll have the whole tractor done so that's what we're looking at doing now this same water pump fits the TEA 20, TE 20, TED 20 which is the petrol Kero model um, TBO I think they call it in England the TEF 20 which is the diesel and it also fits the petrol 35 and 135 and the diesel, the four cylinder diesel 35, FE35, with the standard um, 23C engine. The TE20 diesel has a 20C engine, so, so this same pump does a lot of, lot of different things. Now why would we repair it when you can buy them? You can buy them and you can buy them anywhere. Um, any tractor agency in Australia we have Bearco. Bearco sell the pump bare like that um, with the nut on the top and they also have a keyway to do some of the early pumps. Um, and look, they are reasonably cheap to buy. The Sparex also sell a pump. They sell a pump they sell a pump assembly with a hub already on it and that's a good option too. Um, they're not expensive. They're, they're, uh, look, they're under a hundred dollars at the moment. In, so, yeah, at this present day, anyway. Um, to get this little drive hub off, this is what your pump drives with, and that's your drive hub. Now, see the pattern on that. That's what they call a trapezoid pattern, and. Trapezoid means it's not a square circle. The bolts are uneven. And the bolts are uneven to give it room on the back for the cotter pin. So what holds this on is, you remember the old push bikes? The old push bikes years ago. They had a little cotter pin holding the pedals on and that's all that, ha all that happens here. That, that slides in and there's a flat on the shaft here. You can see the little flat. And the cotter pin goes, goes in there and the flat side on the pin sits against there and the tighter you do the nut up, the tighter it goes. So, so we'll pop it apart. Um, I've got the, a tiny little bench press that I just bought. Oh, look, I've had it for ages, but I, I bought it um, just to do little jobs like water pumps and things like that. It's only six tonne. You probably don't need that. Um, you, you can bump them apart and things like that, but um, 
So follow along. Um, we'll see how we go. Oh, another reason why I'm thinking of it, why would we do up the old pump? Um, we take some of our tractors to shows and things like that. And, and I, I like to have them original if I can. The new pumps don't have the grease nipple on it. Um, and look, the new pumps don't need a grease nipple, but um, for authenticity, it's good. Now, you can see a little hole in the back there. That's where there's a drilling from the grease nipple down in between the two bearings. So that's how it gets greased. Now, the new ones, the aftermarket pumps that you buy, um, they don't have that, but they don't need it either. They have sealed bearings. So um, what SKF and the bearing companies tell us uh, that um, um, the bearings from the factory, the sealed bearings, they're the ones that have got a little bit of uh, red or black rubber sealing on the side of the bearings on the ball races, they're sealed for life. They say that the lubricant in there from, um, from the factory is enough to seal out the life of the bearing. So um, they may be right, that's their game. So, but I, I'm just doing this for authenticity. You have a big hole down the bottom here. This big hole, that's your telltale for when things are leaking. If you've got water coming out of there, you're in trouble. Um, and yeah, there's another little hole in here. And I'm not 100% sure what that's for. We'll have a look at that. Um, I know the grease hole is here for the grease nipple to take out down, but I'm not sure what this one would be for. So, so follow along. We'll pull this pump apart and hopefully you can do your own. The whole idea of these videos is to, um, we know how to do them, we've done them for years, but um, is to encourage you, if you're doing a tractor restoration or you just have a tractor that you like to run around in and you're on a budget or you just like to do all your own stuff, um, hopefully we can give you the confidence to have a go. So follow along, we'll do the best we can. Okay, we've now got our pump off the tractor and on the bench. And there's a couple of things we need to look at. One is the gap here. And that's this gap between the impeller and the housing. If you're pressing it back in, you need to know that. So on our particular pump here, it's two millimetres. So the gap, the gap between this housing here and the back there is two mil. Also, sit it there, take note of whether Grease nipple points to. In our instance, it goes across here like that. Now, I don't know if you can see the end of that grease nipple. There should be a little ball in there. There's no ball. That's long gone. And it looks like it had been replaced some time with a... Look, it may have even been a chrome one, but... Anyway, we'll, we'll replace that grease nipple as we go along. We need to now support the water pump in the press and press down on here. Now, this is a 3 8, little 3 8 or 5 16th by the look of it, UNF thread, and you don't really want to bugger that up. And so, what we need to do is press on the outside here. And if you use your original hub, it'll sit over there. See the, see the cut out here? That seems to fit there nicely. That won't take you all the way, but that'll get it started, and sometimes that's enough to keep you going. If you have the aftermarket type hub, you can still get away with it. It'll, it'll still do it. But look, that's just to get started. Sometimes getting started is the hardest bit, then once it starts to move, you're okay. Um, if it does start to move, and you've got it away, there's nothing at all wrong with putting a socket one way or another on there. Try and get as close to the um, close to the inside as you can, so the socket doesn't want to ride over the chamfer there and the chamfer here. So, in my instance, I could probably probably go smaller, and that would be okay. That would press all the way out. So, I'll set this up in the press, and we'll come back in a minute. Now we have the water pump set up in the press, and well, it's not really set up properly. There's a couple of things I need to show you here. Now I'll. Zoom out just a little bit, I think. The other out, yep. And I've got it set up in the press on a couple of bits of steel. Now, you have to make sure 
that you press on the outside of the impeller. So the impeller's got plenty of clearance. Normally I would try and do it right down on the bed, but on this little press we don't have enough room. Now, you'll see this gap here in this pump. That's our, our telltale where the water comes out if we have a leak. Now, we don't want to press with that on the side under here. That piece of housing there is not supported. So what you need to do is, say, put it at the back. And that way, you've got a, a nice thick piece of housing here supporting it, and you've got a nice long housing here supporting it. So, so we put him right over under the press, under the rod on the press. We put our little water pump piece on there and I'll have a bit of a pump away for you here. Remember this is only a tiny little six ton press so it doesn't take a lot. That's going easy as anything. Now we've just run out of room. The, the body here is just touching the side. So we give ourselves some clearance. See if we can have some room for that. And we'll go again. Now I'm doing that without the lever in it. So you can tell it's quite easy to go. And we've just gotten to the stage where it wants to come out on its own. So that's our shaft with the crook water pump seal. Now the water pump seal used to sit there and run against that house. Okay, let's talk about water pump seals. Now, this is the seal that came out of the tractor. And how does it work? Well, this locates into the impeller there should be a rubber bellows between here and there that's not there anymore. And there's a piece of carbon on the front there. And that piece of carbon rubs on this housing here. So as the, as the pump turns, this turns with the impeller because it's all part of the one seal and it seals on this surface here. And so the seal that is available now is a different type of seal. Now, you may well think it, it won't go, and I, uh, I had to suss this out for myself before I was confident about it. So, the new seal, instead of a piece of carbon running on the housing here and wearing the housing like that has, you can see if I put a new seal there, there's not, not a chance that will seal. It's quite rough. So, the new seal you get is what they call a cassette type seal. And I'll just shift that handle. And it's a cassette type seal. So, what often happens is the hole in the pump here is big enough to fit the seal in. And then the seal seals on the shaft and the impeller doesn't have to have any of the load of the, of the seal at all. But now with these old pumps, they're the other way around. So this seal will fit and seal into this housing here. But what do we do with this fella here? Well, we have, a, we have an option. The only option really is if you have a lathe available, Put that in the lathe, put the housing in the lathe, get the bearings out, put the housing in the lathe, machine this flat and polish it. Highly polished, nice and flat. And when it's polished 
when it's highly polished and it's nice and true, this seal will seal on it. Now, this seal is a Sparex number. Now, Sparex number is S40075, and that's available in America, Australia, and England. And so, what we can do with this little seal is there's a rubber where the rubber should seal on the shaft, and that's how it works on the later type pumps. But on these really early pumps, you can actually pop that seal, pop the rubber down the middle, and there you're left with a seal. Now, how does this seal work normally? Well, normally, you have a polished ceramic disc. You can see that's polished to a nice shiny finish. I'm trying to get a glaze on it for you, but I'm, I'm having trouble. There we go, I think you can see how shiny it is. And one of these parts is fixed or with the shaft and the other ones on the other pumps is in the housing. So as this turns, it's a mechanical seal. So the surfaces are ground so finely or polished so finely that with a little bit of spring pressure and there's pressure, there's pressure in this seal. So with that spring pressure, that holds pressure against these two housings and water can't come out. Now, what are we going to do with ours? So, look at this. We should be able to press this, clean this housing out first, of course, and press this into the housing. So, what we're going to do is clean out the impeller, polish this surface in there. I may even bead blast the impeller to make it look pretty. And we're going to press that in there so it's a nice solid fit. We're going to put the water pump housing in the lathe and we're going to tidy that up. But in the meantime, we still haven't got the bearings out yet. So what we need to do is pop this clip out. I'll put all that over there so I don't drop it on the floor, which is highly possible. That little snap ring comes out. Then the bearings inside there you can actually hop in with a punch or um, I can probably do it with a press, but you can hop in and they just bump out. So we'll just, I'll grab a punch and do it that way. I'm trying to do it with things that I think you may reasonably have in your home workshop. And look, that's, that's how loose those bearings are. No hammer needed. So it's an open bearing. It's sealed on one side by the look of that one. That's a spacer to keep the bearings at the correct distance apart. And in there, see all that rubbish? That has to be cleaned out and we'll bring the bearing out as well. So, oh, the bearing does want to come through there. I thought it may want to get stuck on all the rubbish, but there's plenty of rubbish there. No shortage. I'll get my knockometer. I'll knock that out. I might sit it up in the vise and do that. Look at this beautiful stuff. You want to turn? No, no, no. I so I didn't offer. So we'll bump that bearing out and then we'll come back. Okay, we've got all the bearings out now. There was a spacer, then the bearing, then the big spacer, and then the outer bearing. Now the bearings are open on the inside and they're both shielded on the back. Now with this spacer at the back here, I think that's left over from a seal. I can't see what, um, what the need for that would be. There is a little groove 
There is a little groove in here. I'll, go, I'll have a look in the parts book and see if there's a circlet missing or something. But um, I can't see the point of that spacer when the hole down there, the bearing sits in a shoulder down the bottom end there, and it's only the outer, only the outer bearing sits there. So I'll do a little bit of research into that. As it doesn't have it here, I'm, I'm uncertain. We'll have to have a bit of a look. But it definitely came out of there, but when that came out too, there was also a couple of little bits of carbon from previous water pump repairs, I would say. So anyway, we'll get all this cleaned up and we'll work out a plan of attack. Well, as you can see, I've bead blasted the water pump housing and just mainly so we can get a good idea of how worn it is and how pitted it is along here. If you don't have a bead blaster available, um, just cleaning up with a wire brush is fine. <clears throat> so that what we're doing is I've got a piece of inch and three quarter steel in the lathe. The bearing bore here is 40 millimetres, so I'm going to make a dolly and we're going to slide this water pump housing onto that piece of steel and once we get it down to 40 millimetres and that'll ensure that we are true with our with our bearing surfaces and when we machine this across here we'll be at exactly 90 degrees from the centre of the axis so so I'll just get this set up and um, yeah we'll start machining a little bit off okay we're all set up we're zeroed in here we'll just um Tidy all this up and bring him down to 40 mil.
close to 40 there. We'll just see, we like this a loose fit. I'm usually lock tight them on, so. Yep, that'll be fine. Okay, we'll lock tight him on and go from there. Well, we've got the boss lock tighted on now. That's quite, quite firm, so. All we're looking to do is come across this front surface here and give ourselves a nice smooth surface for the seal to go on. So we'll just run a few passes and see how we go. It's a lovely smooth surface. I might polish it with a little bit of wet and dry. See the shine on there now, that's beautiful. That'll, that'll do the job nicely. So, we need to get this back off. Who put that on there? We'll get the heat gun, we'll wave a bit of heat around and that housing should come off. Well, we have the water pump seal here and I've put a little bit of Loctite 515 on it. Bearco in Australia has a great product that does this similar job, it's called R51. So. If you have a Bearco dealer around your area, go and find them. They'll be selling tractor parts. Now we just need to... We're just tapping on the outside of this seal. And it's going in a little bit crooked on me. I'll have to try and... the seal with a little bit of Loctite sitting in above the outer of the seal. I just need to give that a little bit of a wipe and a socket on top just for the space. So we should be able to hopefully keep it nice and straight and press the seal to where it should be. Keeping it straight is going to be the hard bit. Okay. So what do we look for? We looked at the seals all the way around. You can see a bit of sealer all the way around. You looked at whatever we've done, we haven't cracked or damaged the carbon, as that's very brittle. And I'll just wipe that sealer off before it sets a hard lip. And we also need to check that it's still nice and springy, that 
something hasn't gone wrong. So we're good there too. So that's one bit back together. Right, in our instance we've kept the bearings. I've washed them all out, washed all of the old grease out and they come up nice. There's no marks, no little rough patches. So what we're doing now is getting our hands dirty. Uh, to pack the grease into the bearing, I was scrape it along your hand and push it in. And what we're looking to do is fill that bearing cage right up. Give me a wipe there, and that that's just beautiful. That's smooth as. It's stringy grease. Look at this stuff. She's. That is great grease. Um, it's, you can just see it there. I don't want to touch the camera now. Our Maury's Bigfoot Grease. It's great on four wheel drives and things like that. Quickest, <laughs> quickest way to get an itchy nose is to get your hands full of grease. So, but very stringy. Use, Use the best grease you have available to you, or the best grease you can afford. Um, once these bearings have been cleaned like this and all any dirt has been pulled out of them, um, they'll last forever like that. Like, it, it's just, if you can keep the dirt and any impurities out of, the, out of a bearing and keep them well lubricated, you'll go fine. So. I did a bit of research on this little circlip here, on this little groove here, and it appears, from what I can see, it's hard to find a good diagram nowadays, but I believe that goes down there, so there's a circlip goes on here, then this comes down, then the bearing, and that stops, the, the nut and all out here will stop it dropping back in, but this will stop it coming forward and rubbing on the housing. Highly unlikely that it will because of the spring tension in here, it'll push it back. But when I pulled it apart, this was just floating around in there. It was sitting on the shaft, but it wasn't doing anything. There wasn't any circlip or snap ring or, or anything like that. So I'm going to find a little snap ring or a circlip probably, and um, I'll slide down the shaft. Um, I have to, I have to put it on the, in the housing first and then I'll try and push a little snap ring down just to give that something to sit up against because just having that floating um, between this bearing and the housing there just doesn't make any sense so so I'll find something like that and won't be far and we'll be putting it back together again well look it's a new day we've got the sun shining in on the bench from coming in from this way and you can see the the light on the back so it's a little bit brighter all of a sudden so what we need to do in assembling this water pump is get some of the beautiful orange grease and rub around the seal there. And that's just to lubricate the, lubricate the seal. When it sits on that polished surface there, it'll, um, it'll have a bit of lubrication so it doesn't want to chop out. And, um, and what we need to do, I, I found a little circlip and with a little circlip, I need to poke this in the hole, then slide the little circlip down, then probably push it in place with the little spacer, and then support it in the press and we'll start sliding the bearings down. So, so to start off with, we just need to make sure it's clean, slide that in, Grab the external circlip pliers, make them go the right way really, they're, they're swap over ones, so it's like a grease gun, whenever you pick up a grease gun it's empty, whenever you pick up adjustable circlip pliers they're going the wrong way, that's a, one of the laws of nature. So we'll drop that down as far down as I can get it with the pliers. That may help if I actually work in the gap here. Then pop this spacer down. 
Right, we've got the circlip on, and the, it's all sitting down where it should be. Now we'll take the first bearing, and we'll, there's a sealed side and an open side. We slide him down in there. At this stage we're not wanting to hit anything um, because we have the pressure on the seal down the, well, the pressure on the outside of the bearing can force it down against the carbon so we don't really want that. Then this other bearing, we put him that way. It's greasy grease. <laughs> I suppose I wouldn't be using it if it wasn't. Now this here is a gudgeon pin off a John Deere tractor. That'll push us down to this first level. So we'll just pump away. And look, we're using the press, but we're not looking to put much pressure on anything. We just want enough to do the job. Yeah, that'll stop me pumping so much. And doing it this way too, we know we're going in nice and true. See they're just going down there now and we still have a gap down the bottom for the water pump so that's good. Our two millimetres that we measured earlier. We'll just tidy a bit of this up. Boy that grease gets everywhere. But it's a good grease, it, um, that tackiness it's a pain in the bum to work with. That's what does a good job. <coughs> Also earlier I mentioned this is where the grease nipple goes and there's a little little drilling down in here uh, actually in between the two bearings so when you grease it the grease can come down here and I wasn't sure what this hole here was. What this hole here is is a telltale like if you over grease in here rather than popping the seals it'll dribble a bit of grease out the side there for you so, so that's a good thing. All right, well, um, I'll find something that'll just sit down there without me hitting it, and I'll be back shortly. The bench gets a bit lighter and a bit duller, and you know, it's just the, the, we're near the door on the shed and the sun's coming up and going out and all that sort of stuff, so. So we only have to press this down enough so this bearing is down deep enough that we can get the circlip in. And when it's coming down here now, I'm just looking for that two millimetres underneath. We still have a little bit of movement there, which is good, which tells us we have our spring tension all sorted. So we'll get this off, and then we'll put the little snap ring in. Right, now we've got the bearing down low enough that we can get the circlip in. We just pop that in. 
and that gives us a that retains the bearing so it can't go anywhere. Now you'll notice we've got a little bit over two millimetres here at the moment and that may or may not matter depending on how it sits in here. And you can hear that's just touching inside with no gasket. So by the time a gasket comes it'll come up a bit so. So what we do in that instance is sometimes once it's all assembled, we can actually slide it in the press, try and support it as flat as we can, and find an object. <laughs> You've never got the right thing here. <laughs> That's plain in the shed, I suppose. The sun's just come out again. We can get this this gap here. We can come down to our two millimeters. And look, well, that's pretty close there. Now, when you've done a water pump like this, you can just hear. We get up near the microphone on the camera. You can just hear a little bit of a movement. You check that you've got drag on your seal, which we have. So when that goes into the housing now, which it would actually go that way, I believe, there's no, no rubbing inside. The only other thing you do need to keep a mind of <coughs> is where this boss goes on um, yeah the depth of that but normally the top surface here all right the top surface here with the washer and that was level but look some were some weren't it was just something um, if you push it down too far down here um, this back housing here will rub on that there so you don't want that either um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. I, I, I also think it wouldn't have been bad in this instance to have a little spacer behind there. So once this is, um, once this is locked on, there's no chance of that ever moving backwards on us. Um, which I don't think it will, but it's just um, it's got the the press fit in the bearings to hold it there. But that would give it a, a more definite seal. So I'll go and find a couple of grease or a grease nipple. Well, look at that. That's the water pump done. I've put a grease nipple in here. It's still loose. I'm going to take it out to paint the housing. We've put the hub on and there's a washer and a lock nut on the end here. That's a nylon nut. So there's no chance of, if this cotter comes out, um, there's no chance of that coming off. Usually, if you look at the front of an engine, the direction of rotation is clockwise. So with it turning that way, I usually place the cotter this way, so the force of the motion would push it in harder. Then another little tip that you may or may not know is you can't get a spanner in there really well. You, can, you could get a socket in if it's thin walled, but if you turn it to this circlet groove here, you've got all the access you need. So look, that's it for the video on the water pump. Um, like I said earlier, the, the idea of these videos is to encourage you to have a go. Um, this is an early 1948 water pump. Yours may be different. Um, there is three different types of impellers. Um, I'll, at the end of the clip here, I'll put up a couple of photos um, straight out of the manual. Um, the top photo is a picture. It's a schematic of two different styles of water pump. And, Above the centre line is one picture and below the centre line is another model. And then I'll put a photo after that, a screen grab after that, of um, the three different impeller setups out of the old workshop manual. I have a, I have a proper Fergie workshop manual if it's like 1945, or no, sorry, 1955 
or something like that. So I'll take a couple of screen grabs out of that and put through. And um, apart from that, get out there and have a go. Thanks for watching. Um, please like, subscribe and comment. And um, yeah, we'll work along and try and get a few interesting videos out there for everyone. And um, hopefully you gain something from it and are encouraged to have a go. We'll catch you later, eh?